So um, I already have started a template for a program. Okay, so standard stuff, right? Uh, so what I'd like to do is just uh, right now uh, do a small program. Now we'll just add some numbers, okay? So that we can see, you know, how to add numbers in the array using our uh, indirect, right? Indirect addressing, and also how do we use this loop, okay? The the L O O P instruction. So let's go ahead and we start by going into our data section. I'm going to do a very small array. I'm going to call this array my array, right? My array uh, of bytes. Okay. And it's going to have uh, just some numbers. All right. So those five numbers. Right here. First off, we need to be able to find the location of the first item of my array. So we will say that we're going to move into ESI. Okay, I'm using the uh, this this register to put the offset, right, which is the address of the first look of the first address location of my array, right? Uh, whichever that may be. We'll find out in a moment. Once we run this, we'll see where my array or the very first item, right? The address of the first item will be placed. So now we have that stored into ESI. Now we need to know the size of my array. Now I know the size meaning how many elements, okay? The length of the array. So I know it's got five items, and I know in the notes we looked at, well, we can always add plus one or increment ESI, but we don't always know if this is a byte or a word or a double word, et cetera, right? So that means that our code will have to be too specific. So to make our code a little bit more general, more generic, I guess, uh, we're going to, instead of just hard coding the plus four and plus eight or whatever it may be, we're going to say, well, I'm going to use a loop, all right? And in that loop, remember that my, my loop uses the ECX register, which is the uh, uh, counter register. And I am going to store inside of the ECX the length of my array. So now this doesn't give me um, what type it is. If it's a byte or a word, it doesn't tell me how many times I'm going to be skipping. But it does give me that I have five items in my array. So that sets up my count, which is great. Now I am ready to start adding these numbers. So I am just going to create, if you remember, uh, the standard syntax. We said that we needed to have uh, we needed to have what's called a label, right? Okay. So once we use our loop instruction, we need to have a label for that uh, loop to get to. So once we have that label, now we can go ahead and continue doing some instructions that will be repeated for that uh, sub uh, code, right? So we're gonna say, okay, now that I know the size of my array and the first item of my array, I can simply say, oh, one thing I'm gonna do before that, I'm gonna move into EAX, I'm gonna use, uh, EAX as my sum total, I guess. So right now I'm just going to set it to zero so that I have a, a total of zero. All right. And I am going to put right here, I am going to add into EAX, right? Whatever is inside the address being pointed by ESI. All right. So ESI, whichever address it may be, going to look at that position and it's going to find the five and because I have those two brackets 
going to use that 5 and it's going to add it into EAX, which right now has 0. So that's going to add 0 plus 5, 5, and it's going to store it into EAX. Now I have to move to the next item in my array. So we'll do that by incrementing, right? You, ideally, because this is a byte, we would say something like increment um, ESI. However, again, what if this is not a byte array? What if it's a word array or a double word, a quad word, right? So it is better if we say something like, well, let's add, okay, right? So we're going to add into ESI the type of my array. So remember this other instruction type? That one checks what type this is. It's a byte, so it will add one byte. So if this one were to be a word, it would then add, right? It would then uh, add two. If this were a double word, it would add four. So this one allows me to reuse this code regardless of the type of uh, my variable. So now that I have that, right, this one moves on to points, we'll say points, to the next item in array, okay? So that points to the next item in the array, and now I'm ready to loop back up. So we're simply going to have our loop, and we're going to loop where? We're going to loop back to top. Okay. All right. Once we're done, we can exit our uh, exit. Right. We're done, and we're going to finish our procedure, and then finish our program. All right. So I am going to go ahead and start my debugging here at my offset. So I'm going to debug. Start debugging F5. Okay. Running, running, running. Okay. All right. This screen just got super tiny. All right. Decrease this one a little bit more. Okay. So up here, right now everything's empty. We're going to see changes here in ESI. And we're going to see changes on our ECX, right? And then, of course, on our EAX, all right? Okay. Um, I'm also showing my flags, though I don't think I need the flags right now. So I am going to omit the flags just for a moment. All right. So let's start this. So um, I am going to step forward with F10. So now notice that ESI, so the location of my array, the first atom in my array, it's at location uh, 84000, all right? Now, if you want to look at all of the items in your array, remember that you go to your debug window, then go to Windows, and you can select Memory. In Memory, select uh, Memory 1. And that opens up all the uh, all the memory locations available at this point. To find exactly where my array is, you enter the ampersand and then type my array, okay? The 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 variable my array. And when you press enter, notice that it takes me right here. And okay, that's kind of small, but if you do it in your own screen, it says location eight four zero zero zero. And here we go. Here's the five. Here's the A, here's the F, right? So it's 5, 10, 15. Then we have 20 and we have 19, which is the 25. So if we go back to our registers, here's ESI at location 84000, which matches obviously right here, location 8400, which would be this right here, the very first item, okay? So if you need to check that, that's how we do that. Same thing for other. If you have other variables and you wanted to see where they were stored, then we would do the same thing. Uh, you simply come up here, you enter the ampersand and the name of that variable. Okay, 
So now let's uh, step through again. Okay, so now we're moving uh, my counter five into my ECX. Now let's go ahead and uh, take, go to the next item, which moves the zero into EAX, right? So we step forward. So there's the zero. Now we're going to move and add the location at ESI, the item inside the location at ESI into my EAX. And notice that now we have here the five, okay? The five. Now, yes, it left other stuff in there that it's okay, because we're using a byte. Remember that I am using the entire 32-bit register, okay? But the item that we're using for my byte, is this one is only really using only eight bits, okay? So it is using the low bit uh, section. So it'll modify this, and it'll leave this other part alone, okay, for now. Yeah, all right. So I step forward again, all right? And now it moved the type. Notice that here now my ESI, it moved to location one. It added it by one. So now I go forward, okay? Go back to the top and one more time. Here we go. Here's my uh, next one, okay? Which was my 10 plus my five, right? So that gave me 15. So now it's F. And I go back to the next. Notice that ESI now moves to two, right? Sorry, it's because it takes me a, 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 a little bit of time finding my F10. I'm in a laptop and numbers are tiny. All right. And we go back to the top. So we just continue. So you can see how this is going through. Now we're at uh, ESI 5, right? So it's the last location. Okay. Notice that my ECX only has one. So this is my last iteration. And now ECX got to zero, because remember for our loops, it goes from, uh, I know we're used to C++ going from zero, one, two, three, but here it goes from the highest number and it goes down to zero. So now notice that the next step that we're gonna be using is uh, uh, invoking that, that Microsoft um, Windows exit process, returning zero because there were no issues and we're done, okay? So let's modify just slightly my array so that my array now uses a D word just so that we can see the difference on our, uh, right here, our type, okay? I'll go much faster in this one. All right, so we're starting. Let's move through this. Okay, so our offset is at 94,000. Okay, all right, ECX, the counter gets to five because we, we still have only the, the five items. And now, uh, okay, EAX is zero. And uh, let's go to the top. All right. So now notice how my ESI, once we did, we went through the type of my array, ESI, ESI went from 94000 to 94004. So we went by four. Why? Because we're using a double word, right? So right now it's a double word. And also notice how my EAX it, it's all completely clear. We're no longer just using the low bit, right? the the al we're not using just the al part of it because we're using a double word uh which is the entire 32 bits well is using the entire uh size of my eax so we see those changes there okay 
ESI now goes to 0, 08, and then to C, which is 12, right? Then to 10, which is our uh, 16. And then finally, we're going to get to 20, right? So 14 and then 19. Uh, we'll finish. And that is how you use your loops.